And then you say, how do you know? It's obvious, isn't it? God never tells us to go on Dancing with the Stars and look half naked the whole time you're there, right? And to be on a TV show as, 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 as like that. God just doesn't do that. That's not even morally right. So she is, she, you don't know how God is speaking to you until you know what God is saying in the first place. God, the Holy Spirit, never tells you to do something that the, Holy, that the Bible doesn't teach. And then we look at the inerrancy of the Word of God. Number three, we talked about the inerrancy of the Word of God. It is completely reliable. You can be sure that if the Bible says it for you to do it, God is going to do it. You can be sure that it's reliable. Someone says, well, I've tried to live the Christian life for a year and I give up on it. What are you saying? The Christian life is a God life. God is going to make your life what it should be if you obey His Word. It is reliable. In inerrancy, there is, there is no part of Scripture that's wrong. No. Genesis is a real book in a real time with real people, and it's not a myth. Right. Did you know that the Jewish people believe it's a myth? They believe Genesis is a myth up until Moses. That it's just an allegory. It's truth in an allegory that, that really did not occur. There's no part of the Bible that's not reliable to be true. Fourthly, I mean, fourth is the preservation of God's Word. We never got into that rule. We'll get to that a little later. The, pres the preservation. God has preserved His Word. So the comment is, can you, how can you tell me that Moses wrote this book in, in 1500 B.C. and it's now been 3,700 years since the Bible has been written? How can we, and all of the original manuscripts are gone, how can we be sure that what we've got here is what God really said? God has preserved His Word to be accurate. Mm -hmm. In all these years, what God originally wrote through the hands of Moses is still true today. God hasn't changed His plan. Right. It is amazing what was sin 50 years ago is no longer sin. Mm. There are some things, Bill, you and I could not have... We would have been caught... If we'd have been dead if we'd have done it 50 Absolutely. years ago. Absolutely. Now we can do it and nobody thinks anything about it. Right. Uh, if it was sin 10 years ago, it's still sin today. Uh, if, it's, if, it's sin, if it was wrong 10 years ago, it's still wrong today. Just because society says it's not wrong doesn't mean it is not wrong. That's right. God has preserved His Word. You can be sure it's accurate. Number five is the illumination of the Scriptures. The work of the Holy Spirit is helping us to understand spiritual truths. When a Christian, a believer, a true born-again believer, who, is, who has the Holy Spirit within him, reads the Scripture and hears it preached, the Holy Spirit confirms in his spirit that what has been said is right. And put it this way. If, you're, if, we, if we're believers and I'm preaching and I'm preaching the truth, if the Holy Spirit is in Johnny and in Bill and Richard and Danny and your spirit says, he is just dead wrong. Let's take a vote on it. How many of you, I'm not going to just speak your speech. Let's see what America thinks about this. Here is, here's, here's, here's the poll for the day. Is this, is the Bible God's word? Let's see what America thinks. Don't you get tired of that? America, th I don't care what America thinks. 
America could be all wrong about something and it still could be true. Now, if I'm telling the truth, and you and, and Johnny will say, the Holy Spirit confirms to me in my spirit you're telling the truth. And Bill says, and I don't agree with it. And, 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 and Richard says, I'm not quite sure. Do you think the Holy Spirit is here to confuse us? No. 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 No, no, no. no. If we had the same Holy Spirit, why would the Holy Spirit say Charles is right and the Holy Spirit tell you Charles is wrong? Why would the Holy Spirit confuse us? He doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. no, he doesn't. So, the Holy Spirit is going to confirm what we are saying to be true or not true. Now, this, so what I'm saying, and secondly is, there is, there is this innate within Scripture that as we read it, it inspires us. When you read the Word of God, I've been listening to the Bible. I've been trying to read, go through the Bible in 90 days. Oh man, I had to read 12. I had to listen to 12 chapters last night. Deuteronomy. You ever, have you ever read Deuteronomy for an, for 30 minutes? Now I'm seeing. Oh, this is great! I love Deuteronomy. Can't wait to get to Joshua. <laughs> Do you know that if you apply your mind that the Holy Spirit actually can give you some thoughts that you never had before maybe? Yep. Or at least some understanding? The Holy Spirit is just not words. The Holy Spirit lifts up the words. Of, it inspires me. What do you think motivational speakers are? You, 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 uh, for instance, Philip uh, Phelps, the big uh, the, uh, swimmer, the Olympic swimmer. You know, he goes all over the United States and speaks to kids. LeBron James goes all over the United States and tries to inspire people. The guy that plays Batman was at, what, at the, in the Colorado where they got shot, he's been going to the hospitals and trying to, to, to inspire the, the people that have been shot. You can be inspired by some, what someone else says. When I'm reading the Word of God, the Holy Spirit inspires me. The Holy Spirit inspires me. That's, that's what God's Word does. It's just not print on a page. It's God's Word, and it lifts up from its pages, and through the Holy Spirit, inspires me. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Then the next one is the... Is the uh, the, uh, the scripture can be understood and rightly interpreted. It is, it can, it is, it is, you need, it is, hey, I, uh, the scriptures can be understood and rightly interpreted. It is possible. The truthfulness of scripture. It is possible, so no one can understand scripture. It is possible to rightly interpret scripture. It is, it is possible to rightly interpret Scripture. Now, I know you're going to ask the question, why is there so many interpretations? We had a meeting a couple weeks ago when we had uh, Hale's reunion here, and I was sitting across the table for some people. And by the way, one of the ladies says, we have, we have moved back to Memphis, and we're looking for a church to go to. And, uh, you know, you, that's... I'm sure I don't know what kind of church she's looking to look for. <laughs> Most people come to our church and say, well, this is not what kind of church I'm looking for. Well, that's, I understand that. And, but your, your friend from last Wednesday, she kind of liked it, didn't she? She's going to be back. She's going to be back. <laughs> you can understand Scripture. Now, number five is the canon of Scripture. The canon of Scripture. And we try to go through, and then the next one, tonight, today, I want to talk about the unity of Scripture. The unity of Scripture. This may not surprise you, but there is a connection of the canon of Scripture. There is a connection from Genesis to Revelation. Did you know that, that, that in order to understand the Bible, you need to have a little general understanding of the whole Bible? 
you know, they just weren't, they did, you know, there, are, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books written that could have possibly gone into making up the 66 books. There are 66 books for a specific reason and a specific purpose, and they all have purpose. There is a purpose in Scripture. And someone says, I'm clueless what Genesis is all about. What does that have to do with Matthew? To understand Matthew, you need to know Genesis. I've never read it. To fully understand why Jesus Christ was born in the first place, you need to understand Genesis. Some people don't have a clue. Why was it necessary for Jesus to have been born in the first place? Why did God have to become man in the first place? Was God, Jesus, God is a spirit. The only way we can see God is through Jesus Christ. We can't see a spirit. We can't see God. So Jesus became God. And, God, and Jesus became flesh in human flesh so that we could see God as it were. And when we get to heaven, we're going to see God through the presence of Jesus Christ. So there is a reason. So then the first place we have to ask, what is the message of the Bible? So what is the Bible saying? I'm going to answer that question. What is the Bible saying? Does the Bible have to say something? When you look at the Bible as a whole, when you look at the 66 books, are those 66 books saying something as a whole? When you read, when you read uh, uh, Gone with the Wind, anybody ever read Gone with the Wind? When's the last, where, when's, what, where's the last book you read? Have you read a book recently? You haven't read it. Dorothy, Dorothy, have you read a book recently? Yes. How many chapters did it have in it? Probably. I don't really know. Probably 20. 20 chapters. Was there any chapter, there are 20 chapters, right? Was there one chapter that did not make any sense at all to the story that you were reading? Yeah. Wrong answer. Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't. Every, every, if you have 20 chapters in a book, <laughs> would the author throw in a chapter that makes no sense to the story at all? Well, of course not. 66 books. Are there any books thrown in that don't make sense to the whole no, the the book? Bible. None. They all make sense. you got to learn how to make sense out of it, right? As we look at how God gives us His Word, we saw that every word is His, and thus we would expect the Scripture rather than have fragments have a unifying message. Sometimes a casual look may cause us to misunderstand how it all fits together. But there are unifying themes which run throughout the entire Bible. There's a thread that runs in and out of every book in the Bible. You may not see it visually, but when you in each chapter, it's running in and out and, you, and if you look very carefully, you can see this thread that's building on the climax. And a climax is coming in Matthew. And then, and then, but the purpose of Jesus coming, then the climax builds throughout the rest of the book. And we get the book of Revelation. It's still building. We're still in that process. Let me, let me help you out. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. The book of Genesis chapter 1, and verse 26 and 27. God gives life to man for loving fellowship with him. God gives life.